Hello, my dear students. How's it going? This is Professor Danilo, and today I would like to share with you a couple of things related to project management. We are going to see, we are going to check, we are going to study together all the project management concepts that are key for your understanding about this subject, right? So, if you are ready, let's do it. Project management concepts are not new. Of course, uh, it was launched uh, thousands of years ago, if I could say this. And a couple of examples that I could mention here are the pyramids, the Olympic Games, the Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, and many other uh, types of examples that I could give you, even in Brazil. For example, Aparecida Sanctuary. And all these projects, uh, they were developed even though the professionals didn't have uh, the actual knowledge that they were using uh, project management concepts, right? So, only in the 60s that the PMI was launched and then all this concepts were put together. Got it? And here we have our agenda where you are gonna find all the main concepts related to project management. They are the definition of a project, the role of project management, the importance of it, the PMBOK, the PMP, PMI and PMO, some acronyms that are key for any project manager. Also, we are going to take a look at the phases of a project, the knowledge areas, and also some tools to manage well a project. So, let's continue. The International Project Management Association, or IPMA, was founded in 1965. Uh, it was registered in Switzerland and five volunteers founded uh, PMI as a non-profit uh, professional organization dedicated to advance the practice, science and profession of project management around the world. So, uh, the PMI offers nowadays two levels of project management certification. The CAPM, I mean Certified Associated in Project Management, the base uh, certification, and the Project Management profession, Professional, which is the PMP, which is another certification uh, acclaimed industry recognized their certification for project managers. The PMBOK uh, was the first, uh, the, the name of PMBOK, which is Project Management Body of Knowledge, was produced by the PMI, by PMI. And it was published as a kind of a book to group all the main concepts uh, of project uh, spread around the world, around professionals. Okay, so they joined, they combined, combined it, uh, a number of uh, top performers, professionals, and they collected all the practices that they used to have in order to create the body of knowledge, the project management body of knowledge, called PMBOK. To understand better the concept of project, we need to understand that it is based in two different uh, types of concepts. These two different types of concepts are the first one, it needs to be temporary. So, in that, it has a defined beginning and end in time. 
and therefore define its scope and resources. Right? So this is the first characteristic of a project. It is temporary. The second characteristic is that a project is unique in that it is not a routine operation, but a specific set of operations uh, designed to accomplish a singular goal or a target. Okay? So this is uh, the two main characteristics of a project. According to the PMI, a project is the application of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. This is the formal definition by PMI. Okay? Here in the presentation you have another definition which is a project is a temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product, service or result. Okay? So, as I have said to you, one of the characteristics of a project as, uh, is that it is temporary. Okay? Some examples of different projects could be uh, developing a new uh, pharmaceutical compound for the market or a medicine, expanding a tour guide service, merging two different organizations, uh, constructing a building, and we have many different other examples of projects. As I have said in the previous slide, uh, a project management is um, accomplished through the appropriate application and integration of the project management process identified for the project. I mean, you have a group of uh, skills of project management manager, you have the knowledge, you have the techniques, you have the tools, you have everything that you put together in order to achieve a goal. Well defined, obviously. Okay? Uh, project management uh, enables organizations to execute projects uh, effectively and efficiently, right? Of course, if you can manage the tools, resources, the knowledge well, then you are going to get much better results for your, uh, for your goals, to achieve your goals, right? Here you have two different types of concepts, program and portfolio. A program is a group of different projects, we call it program, okay? And a portfolio is um, a, a definition of different projects and also programs. So if you have different types of programs, in other words, different types of projects, then you have a portfolio. A PMO is the department of a company responsible to manage uh, projects. Okay? So, in a formal definition, it is an organizational structure that standardizes the project-related governance processes and facilities, uh, the sharing of resources, methodologies, tools, and techniques. The responsibilities of a PMO can range from providing project management support functions to direct management of one or more projects. Okay? We have different types of roles for a project management. But I could mention that the main one is focused on providing management oversight for a functional or business unit in order to achieve the goals of the company. Okay, according to the PM Boc, uh, we have a guide of key components of any project. They are project life cycle, project phase, project gate, project management processes, 
project management process group and project management knowledge area. We are going to take a look at each one of them, but you have a brief description in our slides that I have provided to you. One of the main concepts related to project management is the, process, the project management process groups. They are project integration, scope, schedule or time, cost, quality, human resources or resources, communications, risk management, procurement management, and stakeholder management. We are going to study all of them because uh, if we cross, if we create a matrix between the knowledge areas and the process management process groups or the phases of a project, then we will have the main picture of all the, the main concepts we have to uh, identify during any project. So if you are ready, we are going to take a look at each one of them, both process groups and knowledge areas. Here we go. This is the chart that we call project management process groups. This is the life cycle of any project. So for all the projects, we have this five different phases. The first one is initiating process, after we move to planning, after executing, and in the end we have the closing process. And during all these phases, we also have the controlling processes. Okay? We have the start of the project and we have the end of any project too. As I have said before, we have two different characteristics of any project. They are, it is temporary and unique. The project initiation is the start of the project. And the goal of this phase is to uh, define the project at the broad, uh, the broad level. Got it? So this phase usually begins with a business case. This is when you uh, research whether uh, the project is feasible and if it is uh, should be undertaken. Got it? So if feasibility testing uh, needs to be done, this is the stage of the project in which uh, that will be completed. Uh, important stakeholders will do their due diligence to help uh, decide if the project is a go. Okay, so if we are going to move with it. If it is given uh, the, the green light, as we say in, uh, inside companies, so if the project receives the green light, uh, you will need to create a project charter or a project initiation document. I'm sorry about the noisy. So I will repeat this part, okay? So if you receive the green light from the company, you will need to create a project charter, which is a document, or a project initiation document, which is uh, basically the same, what we called PID or PD. Uh, these documents, they outline uh, the purpose and requirements of the project. It should include business needs, uh, the stakeholders, and obviously a business case. Okay? There are too many, uh, too many process involved in this phase. Uh, as I told you before, just to emphasize it, develop project charter and identify stakeholders. Let's move to the second part now. In the planning phase, uh, I have to tell you that it is uh, mandatory, it is key to success successful project management. And uh, it is focused 
uh, on developing a roadmap that everyone will follow. That's why it is so important. This phase is mandatory, as I told you. It's really important to spend time in it. Uh, this phase uh, typically begins with setting goals. So two or more uh, popular methods to define goals. They are the SMART methodology, specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic, and timely. And another one that we called CLEAR goals. CLEAR uh, is an acronym for collaborative, uh, limited, emotional, appreci uh, appreciable, I don't know if I said it correctly, appreciable, and refinable. So they are two different methodologies that you can use in order to define your goals. Okay. Uh, during this phase, the scope of the project is defined and a project management plan is developed. So it involves identifying, I don't know, the cost, the quality, the resources that are available, uh, the timeline, okay? And the project plans also include um, establishing baselines of performance measures. So these are generated using the scope, obviously, uh, also the costs and the schedule of a project. Okay, so a baseline is essentially uh, to determine if a project is on track. That's the plan here. Got it? Let's move on. So the executing process group or project execution is the phase, the phase where uh, deliverables are developed and completed. I mean, this is where you are going to be hands-on. You are going to effectively put all the actions uh, on prets into prets. Okay. So this often feels like uh, the meat of, uh, of the project since a lot is happening during this time, like uh, status reports and meetings, development updates and uh, performance uh, reports. Okay. Uh, here I have one thing that uh, is always used, uh, a different concept that uh, is always used during this phase, which is the kickoff meeting. Uh, it usually marks the start of the project execution phase where teams involved uh, are informed of uh, their responsibilities, their roles, okay? So I could mention a couple of uh, tasks during this phase, for example, uh, develop team or assign resources, uh, set up tracking systems, status meetings, uh, update project schedule, okay? Um, uh, what else could I, uh, could I say here? While uh, the project monitoring phase has a different set of requirements, these two phases often occur uh, simultaneously, or in the same way, in the same time. Okay, so as I have mentioned right now, let's move on to the, to the next phase, which is monitoring. So monitoring and controlling process groups, a uh, process group is about uh, measuring uh, project pro progression, uh, performance, and uh, ensuring that everything is happening aligns with the project management plan, the initial project management plan, okay? Project management uh, managers uh, will use KPIs or indicators, performance indicators, to determine if, uh, if the project is on track. Okay, so if I talk about monitoring and controlling, I uh, must discuss KPIs, okay? So uh, a, uh, 
project manager uh, will typically pick two or I don't know maybe five of these KPIs to measure the, the project performance. Of course we could have many more KPIs but in general we have at least five groups from two to five groups of KPIs that will tell the project management the project manager uh, how is the the project uh, in that period of time related to cost quality uh, safety and many other uh, types of KPIs right and finally we are going to uh, explain I am going to explain to you the project uh, closure or the closing process uh, group. This phase rec uh, represents the completed project. So this is the end. Remember, any pro uh, all projects are temporary. So it is obligational to have uh, a beginning and an end. And this is the end of the project. Okay. So for example, contractors hired uh, to work specifically uh, on the project are terminated at this time, for example. Okay, uh, but on the other hand, valuable teams, uh, team members, they are recognized, so you can give them uh, awards uh, um, because of the, the, the good job they have done. Okay, uh, once the, the project is complete. Uh, the PMs uh, still have a few tasks to complete, obviously. They will need, to, for example, to create a project uh, punch list of things that didn't get accomplished during the project and uh, work with team members to complete them. So they are the, the that actions that you always have in the end and you have to finish, to, to close them in the end of the project, okay? Uh, you have to perform a, a, a final project budget and prepare a final project report and finally uh, they will need to collect all project documents and deliverables and store them in a single place you, you have to create a report, a final report with all the results, the documents, the deliverables of this project specifically and then with this we consider a project completed. Now we are going to move to the knowledge areas. The knowledge areas are, first of all, the integration, the scope, time, cost, quality, human resources, communications, risk, procurement, stakeholders is the last one. As you might have noticed, these are similar to departments inside the company. So if I talk about the scope, for example, I am talking about the leadership of the company. The requirements will come uh, by leaders. If I talk about cost, it's related to accounting, financial, uh, finance, and finance department. If I talk about quality, I am talking about operations, human resources, communications, procurement. All of them are, uh, they have similar roles to business department areas. Okay, now we are going to discuss each one of them. I have a question for you. What holds a project together? Do you know it? Do you have any idea? No? So that would be project integration management, which includes such fundamental plans as developing a project charter that is created during uh, the, initial phase, the initial phase. Uh, this is a document that sets up uh, the project and assigns uh, the project manager. In a project charter, you are going to formalize the existence of a project. 
so you can uh, identify the objectives of the project you are going to identify the stakeholders of the project and the main requirements of it okay another aspect of this area uh, is um, how could I say uh, another aspect of uh, this area is the project management plan this is the word I was looking for which is uh, developed as a project roadmap for the, the project uh, to reach a successful end so once created uh, the project plan is approved by stakeholders or the sponsors of the project and then it is monitored and track it through a uh, change log as the project processes. Okay. I also could say that project integration um, includes the directing and management managing of uh, the project work, which is the production of its deliverables. Okay. This process is monitored, analyzed, and reported uh, on the identify and control any changes or problems that might occur during the project. Okay? So, let's move on to the next part, which is scope. Before we talk about scope, I would like to mention a couple of characteristics of a project charter, which is the document uh, specifically defined in this phase of, uh, of a project in the very beginning. So uh, the project chart, first of all, indicates why the project is being initialized and provides uh, the key elements of the, the project business case. Also, it states the objectives of the project, as I have said, all the schedule, milestones, constraints, okay? It allocates proper funding uh, to the project. It formalizes the project management's assignment and authority level. And finally, it lists the stakeholders. So, with this project char charter, I define the main characteristics of the project for us to start with it. This is an example of a project charter. It is a simple document as you uh, as you can see here. This document can be developed in many different softwares. Um, could be through Word, Microsoft Word or Excel or even PowerPoint or any other text software. Okay, the most important thing is that this project charter uh, needs, more than needs, must be uh, assigned by the sponsor of a project because here you are going to have the main resources, characteristics, milestones, uh, the expenditures, the savings that you are might uh, find during the project, the goals of the project, the main description of it. Okay, so this is really, really important to have this uh, charter approved before you start a project. Now we can discuss a little bit about scope management. The scope uh, relates to the work of the project. So that includes uh, plan scope management, which is uh, part of the project management plan. It, is, uh, it also is uh, when a detailed requirement for the final product or, or service is collected. Okay? Uh, you will uh, also need to define scope in a scope statement. Okay, so this is uh, anything from a, a sentence to a bullet list that is comprehensive to reduce major project risks. Validate uh, scope during the project. Uh, 
which means uh, making sure that the deliverables are being approved regularly by the sponsor or stakeholder. And this occurs during the monitoring and controlling process groups, if you will remember. And it is about accepting uh, the deliverables, not the specs laid out uh, during planning. So the scope statement is um, likely going to change over the course of the project uh, to control the scope, such as if a project uh, falls behind schedule. Okay, so let's move on now. Um, when we talk about stakeholders, we are talking about all people that are uh, interested in the results of the, the project. So they could be banks, for example, or suppliers, customers, the employees, the team involved in it, uh, the project manager itself, uh, himself or herself. So everybody that is interested in the results, in the deliverables, in the goals of the project. So first of all, we must identify the stakeholders. Of course, it is not easy, not always easy, but it's crucial part, it's a crucial part uh, of starting any project. So find out who they are and what concerns they have. Okay. Uh, this will lead uh, to managing stakeholders' expectations to make sure their needs are met and that you were uh, you are in communication with them. Okay. Throughout the project, we need to control stakeholder uh, stakeholders engagement and we need to do this by determining if the stakeholders needs are being addressed because if not we need to figure out what changes need and need to be made to either satisfy those needs or adjust expectations Here, you have one tool that we use to identify stakeholders. Actually, we have two, two different tools. We have the first one, which is a simple table, where you put the information of these people, uh, the power level or the, the, the job, uh, uh, how can I say, the job role inside the company the relation of this per person with the project, the interest of this person in the results of the project, if it's high, medium, or low, uh, the level of influence, okay, the no level of knowledge about the project, if it is uh, necessary, if it's not a matter of informing information, and the strategy in order to achieve the best results. In the other hand, you could make it uh, in a um, chart like this one that you can see in the screen. So you have to identify those people who uh, oppose to your project, resist, neutral, the ones who are positive, or the ones who are sponsored for your project and that will support you. And the levels of them inside the company. If they are uh, members, team members, if they are managers, directors, vice presidents, and here we go. And like this we, we can um, create this chart. Got it? So both tools work pretty well. Now we are going to talk about time. Time management, project time management. Of course, no surprise, it is time consuming. So the project is divided into tasks. 
which are scheduled with start dates and deadlines, as well as budgets for each task. And things are constantly changing over the phases of any project, which means revising these uh, things often. So this involves plan schedule management, which involves um, creating a schedule for the project and determining uh, who is responsible for what. Uh, that means defining activities, which is not the same as making a WBS, but similar. Okay, so WBS, we will see this concept in the future in this presentation, so just pay attention to this. So, uh, we create a task list that uh, touches on every aspect of the project. These uh, tasks are then put in order, that makes sense, and any dependencies between them uh, is uh, noted. So, these dependencies are then determined to be either finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, or start to finish. This, most, this is mostly uh, for large projects, of course, because depending on the time, uh, the period of time, the deadline that you have, you don't need to make all these things. You just need to control uh, the main tasks, for example, if it is a one-month project, or if it is a one-year or a five-year project, five years project, you will know that you will have much more complex tools in order to manage your time. Okay? We have on the board some schedule, the schedule methodology, requirements, processes, and monitoring options that I put for you in order to have a better comprehension about this part. Now we are going to move on to cost management, and this area it uh, involves the project budget, which means uh, having good estimating tools to make sure that the funds that you've got cover the extent of the project and are being monitored uh, regularly to keep uh, all the stakeholders informed about uh, the cost of your project, the results of your project, okay? They will determine the method to establish the budget and uh, each task uh, will have to be estimated for cost, which means including all resources such as labor, materials, equipment, and any anything else uh, needed to complete the task, okay? We have a couple of methods to evaluate the cost of a project and the results. I have here a couple of examples, just like the payback periods, the NPV, the IRR, or the IRR, the uh, uh, ROI, or Return on Investments, one of the main techniques that we use, and also the EVM, which is a technique for assessing project performance. It is not easy to calculate, none of them are perfect, none of this, uh, this, um, this way of measuring the, the effectiveness of a project, the, the cost of a project, are perfect, but all of them you can use combined in order to achieve a better estimation. Okay? Okay, moving on now to quality management. Uh, a project can come in on time and within budget, but if the quality is not up to the standard set, then the project is a failure, of course. So, plan quality management is part of the overall project management plan. Through, uh, it can be a stand-one document if 
it contains the quality specs for the product and for the product or for the service and the process uh, needs to include quality assurance which is just a way to make sure that quality standards are being met uh, therefore to control quality the deliverables must be uh, inspected to make sure that those standards outlined in, in the quality management plan are being met okay we have common tools that we can use such as cause effect diagrams the control charts the Pareto diagrams the flow charts or process map the P map or Ishikawa fishbone diagrams okay all these tools are quality management tools that you could use in order to achieve best quality results in your project. Here you have a couple of examples related to quality management inside a project. So you have a couple of examples here such as the cause and effect diagram which is the, the one of the most common tools to use flow charts, the Pareto diagrams, and the control charts. Moving on to project resources management, it is related to people that are involved into your project. So it's not a matter of only uh, the employees involved in your project, but also the stakeholders and everybody is in, uh, interested in your project, okay? So the project team is your most important resource. Uh, it's crucial to assemble the best team and to make sure they are involved, they are motivated, they are happy with it, okay? But of course you need to track their performance uh, to to ensure that the project is uh, processing as planned, okay, a human resources plan, uh, an HR plan, a HR plan is uh, will identify the roles of these people, uh, requirements for for the positions, and as well as how they fit. In the overall, uh, in the overall uh, project um, structure. Okay, so um, managing uh, the the project team is an ongoing responsibility of the the PM, the project manager, and uh, most of the time, the project manager manager is not the leader, is not the the the, the boss of these people. It's going to it's going to be totally mandatory for the PM to develop the negotiation uh, skill because it is key for the role of any PM. Because of it, most of the times the team members are not under the PM responsibility. Okay. So project. Uh, are often performed in parallel with many other projects and then it's going to be really challenging for the PM to manage these teams because they are involved with their activities, their daily activities, other priorities, other bosses, other leaders requesting many different types of things. So some tips are totally necessary in this case in order to manage well a team if you are a project manager. So never put an employee on his uh, and his superior in the team together. I had an experience like this in the past and it wasn't good at all. So I have to tell you this, this is a very important tip. Uh, try to avoid including people in the team who hold a lot of responsibilities at the company. These people often won't be able to attend the meetings, of course. They have other priorities. Their goals, their uh, personal goals are much more important than your goals as a project manager. So, it is a good tip too. And do not base your recruiting, uh, recruitment decisions 
on personality, but on skills, okay? Don't hire people like you. Hire people different from you because they are going to bring you different skills, different knowledges, uh, knowledge, I'm sorry, and different tools that you could not find if you just hire people with your uh, similar to your profile. Okay, moving now to communications management. Um, oh, I, I have to tell you, all the areas are important, but communication management might be a uh, key for every aspect of the project. Uh, communications inform the team and the stakeholders. Uh, therefore, the need to plan uh, communications management is critical uh, to any project. Uh, it is mandatory. Uh, it is if you don't have a good communication with your team members and your stakeholders, it's a mess. Uh, you are going to destroy your project. Okay. So, um, um, manage the, the communications when the project is executed uh, is necessary to make sure that it runs as planned. So, this will uh, involve controlling communications by revealing their, uh, their effectiveness regularly and adjusting as needed. So, if you have the feedback, if you are doing your follow-up, you can improve your communication. Here you have a communication template, a communication management template, where you have all the, uh, the types of information that you have to send to each type of stakeholder. Okay? It's just an example, just for you to have an idea on how to do it. Moving out to risk management, uh, they will define, uh, actually they will identify how the risks uh, will be uh, uh, itemized, categorized and prioritized, okay? And this involves identifying risks that might occur during the execution of the project by making a risk register, okay? So, obviously, a risk is something that may occur. Uh, and uh, if so, you need to mitigate it. In other words, you need to know what to do in order to avoid bad results in your project. So, risk management includes uh, different activities. They are plan risk management, identify risks, perform quality risk analysis, perform quantitative risk analysis, qualitative ones, risk, uh, res risk responses, and the last one is monitor and control risks. With this map, you are going to have a, a very good map on how to attack if something not good happen, uh, happens to your project. Here you have two different types of analysis. Okay, The first one, you are going to uh, evaluate if the risk, the probability of happen is low, moderate, high or very high. The conditions of this, the probability and the impacts. So, if the impacts on cost, schedule, scope, and quality are low, very low, moderate, high, or very high. With this, you are going to create a map on the... the, the you are going to prior, pri, prioritize all the risks and the ones with higher impact and higher probability of happening, you are going to uh, prioritize them and mitigate, put your efforts to mitigate these risks. Okay, so we are moving to the last one now, which is procurement management. And this uh, deals with uh, outside procurement, 
which is part of uh, most projects, such as hiring subcontractors or hiring suppliers, okay, uh, the ones who are going to provide you what you need for your project. And obviously, this is going to have an impact on the budget or and also in the schedule of your project, okay? Um, here I have put for you a couple of uh, questions that you have to make to yourself in order to identify the best uh, supplier from whom you are gonna buy your stuff, your, uh, your things. So this, uh, these questions could be, for example, can employees absorb the change of the workload? Um, what else? Does a supplier hold a patent? Do we have numerous suppliers available? Does the investment fit with the company long-term strategy? Is there a regulation prohibition, uh, prohibiting uh, delegation? and other types of uh, concerns or questions that you can have in order to decide whether uh, your prospects, your supplier prospects are good or not for your company, are adequate or not for your company. Got it? Well, let's move on. Here you have uh, an example on how to create, how to use a tool in order to identify the best supplier for your company. First of all, you are going to follow uh, the four steps, identify possible suppliers, uh, soliciting identify suppliers, uh, soliciting, I'm sorry, identify suppliers, evaluate all the proposals and awarding the contract. And you do this by classific uh, classificating the, your priorities according to security, performance, usability, technical solution, low costs, and things like that according to the priority of your company. And then you classify all your suppliers and in the end you calculate the score of the suppliers and then you can identify the best one. In our case, the proposal A is better because it achieved 800, uh, 181 points and the proposal B, the B only 146 points. Okay, and to conclude our class for today, related to project management fundamentals, I'm gonna give you 10 terms for, uh, that are key for project managers. The first one is WBS, Work Breakdown Structure. And it is simple, but the idea is really useful. So you are gonna organize all the deliverables of your project in a manageable uh, section. So you can, you can take a look here in the picture and you will see that we have uh, divided the construction of a house into four, uh, three main parts, internal, foundation and external. And we have the deliverables that you can divide again, once again. So for example, the internal deliverables are in the top, but you can divide them into electrical or plumbing. In foundation, you are going to divide it into excavate and steel erection, and external, you are going to divide it into masonry work and building finishes. Okay? And then you can see easily the deliverables that you have to identify in your project. Moving on to Milestone. Milestone is a major deliverable event that you are going to find in your project. 
they are going to give you an idea on the main big deliverables that you are going to achieve during the phases of your project. So in this picture, you can identify, for example, from the project start to the end, you are going to have the milestone 1, 2, 3, 4, until 9. And you have different dates here. So you can control your project through the deliverables, not only through time. Okay? It is really important because you are going to measure your project according to the results and deliverables. Moving on now to the baseline of a project. A baseline uh, is... Um, how could I explain with easy words for you? We have a tool called Gantt, the Gantt graph that you can see in the picture here. Here you can see the Gantt graph where you have the beginning and the, the end of each phase and each uh, step of all the phases of a project. This is a project baseline. It contains, in general, the, the, the scope of the project, the cost, and the schedule, the time of the project. Okay? This is a baseline. And then you can have a, a, a big picture of all the phases and time and costs of each uh, phase of the project. The triple constraint is easy to remember. It's just like a, a, a triangle where we have the three main subjects of any project, time, cost, and scope. This is what we called, or this is what PMs call, a triple constraint. The concept number five is the project life cycle. We have studied this before. So the cycle where we have the initia initiating a project, planning process, executing process, monitoring and controlling process, and closing process, it is what we called the project life cycle. Okay? It contains all the phases of the project. As I have explained it before, this is the Gantt chart where you are going to find the schedule. So the Gantt, the Gantt chart is related to the time of the project, how we can visualize the time to better control the project, to better manage the project. It is uh, used, one of the tools that we can manage this, and it is really popular, it is MS Project. It is a software from my, uh, by Microsoft, which helps us to, to create the Gantt chart for projects that we have. So if you listen about MS Project, it is the chart that it uses. The Change Control Board, or CCB, it is a tool that we use when we have to analyze the change, uh, any changes of a project. Okay, so we are going to create a committee, a group of people, uh, composed by experts and obviously the, the the sponsors of the project, in order to decide uh, on how to propose changes for a project that are, is not on hold, but it is moving, and we need to implement something, some changes, okay? So to do this, we, uh, to do this, we use uh, the, this chart here. Uh, as you can see, it's a simple flow in order to decide if, the, if a change is necessary or not. Stakeholders we have discussed before, but here I'm going to propose for you uh, other resources to better manage it, this subject. The first one is the RACI chart, or HACI chart, where you organize your stakeholders in responsible, approver, uh, the um, contributor to the project, and the 
people that needs that, that needs to be informed only okay and also you have a register a, re a stakeholder register where you can put different types of other information okay just to to give you a couple of resources in it change management is another really important concept for any project so if you need to propose changes in your project you need to manage these changes and here you have this uh, this concept with uh, which is uh, the discipline that guides how we prepare equip and support individuals to successfully adopt change or changes in order to drive organizational success and outcomes in other words if you need to change something, you need to plan it well in order to achieve the best results. And the last concept is related to risk management, which is risk mitigation. The risk mitigation process is, uh, or risk mitigation planning, is the process that identifies, evaluates, selects, and implements options in order to set risk at acceptable levels, given program constraints and objectives. In other words, it is how you are going to eliminate or minimize the results or the impacts of risks. Okay? Here you can set a risk matrix. You can uh, see that it is really visual because we need to identify easily the main uh, probabilities and uh, the main risks of something bad happen to our project okay guys with this we finish our presentation I conclude this class for you one hour presentation and I hope you like it if you have any question just contact me I will be proud to answer your questions to answer to your questions and uh, that's all for today thank you very much for being with me and if you have any questions, just tell me, just send me messages. I will be happy to answer everything to you. Okay? Don't forget about checking uh, the slides, checking the presentation, the materials, in order to study for our test. Okay? So, have a really nice day, a really nice uh, evening, a really nice period of study. And I'm here to help you if it's needed. See you guys. Bye.